Wednesday, April the 6th. Lake level is a little over 916. Uh, you know, I didn't come up as much as I had expected it to with the rain that we got. I think it came up about a foot and a half, just kind of right at the edge of the bushes, but it didn't seem like that rain that we had, that warm rain, really triggered, you know, uh, a lot of the stuff that I was doing anyways. But, you know, bikes changing every day. I mean, I had a terrible day yesterday, but we had a good day today. And it's, it's kind of been on and off. I've been fishing all over the lake. The fish are, a lot of the quality largemouth that I was catching seemed to have disappeared. And now today we caught a lot of uh, smallmouth and Kentuckys out on main lake secondary wind blowing points on a jerkbait. You know, probably one of the better jerkbait fights uh, I've had in a little bit was today. And, you know, most of them are coming around staging areas where they're going to go back in and spawn. Wind seemed to be the big key. Now, we did catch, you know, a couple decent fish uh, on a rock crawler. Uh, Missouri Cross seemed to be, you know, one of the best colors. But we started catching some fish in the areas where the fish are, are going to start spawning. Uh, you know, it's going to get cold the next few nights, so it's going to slow everything down. But, you know, we should already have fish on beds. But these cold nights kind of holding everything back, and I think that's kind of some of them bigger fish, them largemouths. I think they're just out there in the center of some of them guts and pockets. You can see them on your electronics, but they're kind of tricky to get the bite. It seems like the ones that were out uh, getting ready to move back in there to spawn have already moved, and, and they're ready to do their deal. They're just kind of waiting on the water to warm up. But the fish I've been catching back in the areas you know, where they're going to spawn, I mean, they're keepers, but uh, a lot of them are, you know, males. And, you know, they don't weigh a whole lot. You know, they'll be, you know, two pounds, maybe a little less. But several different ways we caught them today. We caught some on a little split shot rig. Uh, we caught some on uh, Ned rigs. And it doesn't, didn't really matter what color Ned rig worm we're fishing. We're fishing on a five fish lure's ultimate uh, Ned jig head. Uh, 3 16th and 1 8th ounce, and, and the little sucker really comes through the rocks and the brush good. It's got a little wire weed guard. Uh, but this is a, a little Z Man worm I got on here, but seemed like, you know, green pumpkin, uh, PBJ will work good, uh, watermelon red. Uh, even that, uh, we even caught some fish putting a, a fish doctor on there, and that's what I've been uh, split shot, and there's a little 4 inch zoom either a french fry or a, a fish doctor, watermelon red or green pumpkin. And we also caught fish back in there and caught fish on this the last few days. But this is a, uh, it's a new shaky head. It's a five fish lures, ultimate, uh, ultimate shaky head. And, and if anybody's ever fished with me, you know, I'm not real big on shaky heads. I don't hardly ever throw them because I feel like uh, a lot of times they get hung up a lot and lose a lot of fish. but uh, this one that uh, Brian Snowden designed has is, is really been working good and you'll know if you get the right one because you'll see Brian's picture on the box. But uh, you know we've got them in uh, 16th up to half ounce with a fine wire hook and one I was throwing was a quarter ounce and I've got a, a five inch salty uh, trick stick uh, big bite worm you know similar to Cinco. And I think it's called a dirty chartreuse. It's already got a little chartreuse dipped on the tail, or you can just take and dip it. But anyways, I'm fishing the Ned Rig split shot shaky head in the backs of the pockets, or even a, a cut off of the main lake, you know, where I, I know fish are gonna spawn where they've spawned in previous years, and just dragging it around the bottom real slow. Now, some areas, the moss is still an issue. Uh, with the crankbait and a bottom bait, especially if you get up around some some brush and some trees But you know, I mean these fish are ready to come in and I think when they do it they're gonna do it overnight uh, I fished up in the White River today Probably from Shell Knob to Baxter uh, Yesterday I fished uh, Kimberling City to the dam and you know really struggled especially th through the midday the morning bite seems to be pretty good up to about 9.30. Then I've had a three or four hour lull. And a lot of that is like, you know, today and uh, yesterday as well. 
when the wind picks up, seems to be when you can start catching them again. But I think it's more that the water's starting to warm up and the fish are getting a little bit more active. I am seeing a lot more bait, uh, shad, any areas where I'm catching the jerkbait fish and the crankbait fish. There's still a ton of shad out there real deep, but I think a lot of that bait's moving and the, the fish seem to be moving with it. Uh, you know, Alabama rig will still work as well. It's just that I'm not seeing, I'm not catching the quality fish. You know, I catch about the same size fish on the Alabama rig as I've been catching on the jerkbait. You know, they're nice fat Kentucky, it's fun to catch, keeper fish. But when you're looking for the bigger fish, that especially this time of year, there's, there's a bunch of big ones up shallow if a guy can figure out how to catch them. And it's kind of a day-to-day -day deal. I think there's a lot of different baits that'll work. I'm, I'm catching a few on a jig around some boat docks, uh, anywhere from five to 20 foot deep, but you gotta fish really slow. And when the wind's blowing like it is and like it's probably going to for the next two or three days, uh, it's a little hard to fish boat docks unless they're pretty well protected. But it sounds like we're going to have 15, 25 mile an hour winds the next two days, gusting up to 30 to 35. So, I mean, that should make the reaction bite a little bit better, the jerk bait and the crank bait. The problem is when it's blowing that hard, it's hard to position your boat and get your bait where it needs to be, you know. So sometimes you've got to kind of find a happy medium. You want wind, but you don't want 25 to 30, you know, crashing into where you're trying to fish. It makes it a little difficult to fish. But with the trolling motors that everybody's got, a lot of times what I'll do, if I'm on a good point, I'll just uh, spot lock into the wind and uh, we'll just get on the back of the boat and fish with the wind so that we can cast our bait where it needs to be, needs to be put and, you know, give it a good presentation. When you're trying to throw a jerk bait or crank bait, and the wind's blowing at your line sideways, uh, it's not doing any good because the wind's moving the bait when you want it to set still, and it's just hard to keep the bait dead still and get around trees. And not all the jerkbait fish seem like I have to have trees, just I think wind is the biggest key. Transition banks, uh, that black ledge rock with a little bit of gravel mixed into it, seems like the flatter banks or the flatter pockets is where I'm getting a lot of the split shot Ned Reed bites. Now I wouldn't be surprised, well, we're probably a week or so away from top water, but I have seen a few surfacing fish, but I think we're gonna get down in the 30s Friday night. So that's gonna, whatever we gain in water temperature tomorrow, we're probably gonna lose Friday night and then start back over again. But looks like next week, we're gonna have some 80 degree weather so then fish uh, you know, sometime next week that water gets up into the high 50s, should see a lot of them, you know, moving back in there to spawn. And something else that's going to come into play is a, is a fluke. If, you know, some people may already be catching them on. Problem with a fluke is, with the wind, it's a bait that uh, works real good back in the slack water, but it's hard to throw out there in 15, 20 mile an hour wind and to get it down. So, uh, lake's going to be busy this weekend, several tournaments, everybody be safe. and. Good luck, good fish until next week.